Hey everyone, I'm Ernie Gonzalez. I'm a two-time Latin Grammy winning uh, producer and engineer. I frequently get to work here at Blackbird and I also tour on the road with uh, John and Martina McBride. Welcome to Studio A. We're gonna talk about reverb chambers today. A uh, reverb chamber is uh, usually a huge room with plaster walls, a lot of reverberation. We have a great chamber here in Studio A. We have a few other ones here at Blackbird. This room is very unique here at Studio A because we have an adjustable ceiling. We can adjust the height from eight foot all the way to 22 feet. We can really elongate the reverb on any source or any instrument that we'd like to put it on, which is a, a really, really great um, feature that this reverb chamber has. This is a Michael Cronin design, built room, uh, and this movable ceiling was built by Brad Wathney here at Setco. So the way we capture the reverb sound here in Studio A is we have some microphones attached to the movable ceiling, which you can see. The mics travel up and down with the ceiling, so whatever reverb time we want to use, the mics are going to capture that certain time. Everything in that room is unparalleled. There's no parallel walls, no parallel floors, no corners. Everything is totally rounded, uh, and the walls are all made of plaster. So the way this reverb chamber operates is pretty unique. Uh, we have a set of buttons that we can raise and lower the ceiling. You actually have to hold the button down to raise or lower. It's not gonna travel by itself. So if you find the right spot, just let go of the button and the, the ceiling will stop and that'll be your spot for the day. The other cool thing about this room is we have a remote that can control the power supplies to any microphones you may have attached to the ceiling. So in the morning, if you forget and you raise the roof all the way up and you, that's where you want your reverb and you, you say, oh my God, I forgot to turn the power supplies on. Don't worry, we got you. We have a remote. Same thing at the end of a long day. Uh, if you're coming back tomorrow and you don't wanna leave your power supplies on, you can use the remote and shut those off. So this is just a generalization of how the chamber is used. But we've noticed that there's three main ways that people are using the chamber in their sessions. Method number one that we see a lot is propping the door open to the tracking room. Benefits of this are while there's a drummer or there's a singer in this room, and as they're playing, reverb from the chamber will filter into the tracking room, and you can capture that with room mics in the tracking room. You can also capture that with the ceiling mics that are in the reverb chamber. So you get two different tastes of reverb from the tracking room and also in the reverb chamber. Cool trick that I learned from an engineer here is the more closed you have the door to the reverb chamber, like a reverb unit as far as pre-delay, the more the door is closed is more pre-delayed time. So for a listening example, we're gonna have that here in a second and you're gonna hear that with the door all the way open. So the second option we see a lot here at Blackbird and it's probably one of the most popular ones is using the reverb chamber with the door closed. And the way we do this is we'll take a source uh, or a track that we have in our Pro Tools session that, that we say, oh, maybe you know what, this is a little dry. We need to wetten it up a little bit and give it a little reverb. So we'll run that source and send it to this powered speaker that we have in the room. The speaker will shoot up into the ceiling and the mics that are attached to the ceiling will capture the reverb sound. So the third method of using the chamber that we see every now and then here at Blackbird is actually having a player sit or play inside the reverb chamber, which is not always ideal, but it can be used for some really cool effects. Uh, I, I've done it here on a session where I had a, an acoustic player actually sit in this room and we took the ceiling pretty high up the acoustic sounded like he was a mile down the road and it, it was a cool effect for the song that we were looking for. And it worked better than routing the sound through the actual speaker. That's just one way you can use it. There's all different kinds of ways you can try it. Find one that works for you and, uh, and have fun with it. So let's listen to three different types of audio materials at three different heights of the reverb chamber, at the lowest, at the midpoint, and all the way to the top. So the first example you're gonna hear is a horn section that I tracked a while back and we're gonna to listen to that at the lowest point of the reverb chamber.
And now we're gonna to listen to that same horn section again, and we're gonna raise the ceiling up to the mid height inside the reverb chamber, and let's hear how that sounds. Lastly, we're going to take the ceiling all the way up to the highest point, and we're going to hear that horn section one more time in the reverb chamber, and you can hear the long reverb, how lush it gets when the ceiling is all the way up. Let's check it out. All I can say is wow, like it's amazing sounding, the lushness, the space, the dimension that the, that the horn section has in that chamber is just unreal, it's incredible. Now we're gonna change it up a little bit and the next piece of audio you're gonna hear is a drum kit played in the tracking room and you're gonna hear that with the ceiling at the lowest height in the reverb chamber. And now we're going to listen to the same drum kit with the ceiling raised up to the midpoint in the reverb chamber. And we're going to hear the same drum kit one more time. This time the ceiling is going to be raised all the way to the top. Door's gonna remain open and we're just grabbing the mics that are in the reverb chamber. Let's check it out. As you can hear in the drum example, um, you can really, really tell the more you bring up the ceiling, the wider the reverb gets the more low end kind of builds up in there and thickens the drum kit up a little bit. And now as an example for having a player in the room, I'm actually gonna step in the reverb chamber and I'm gonna talk at the ceiling with the lowest point and maybe clap my hands and then we'll raise it up to the midpoint. And then lastly, we'll do it all the way to the top. Let's hear it now. So here we are in the reverb chamber at the lowest point. So hey, hey, hey. A nice short verb. So now we are at the mid height uh, with the roof here in the reverb chamber. Hey! Hey! And now we're in the reverb chamber with the ceiling all the way up. So we just listened to my examples and you can hear, I mean, the depth of when I clap, it's just a really nice decay and really lush reverb. I mean, it just doesn't sound like just a dead clap in your face. It has space, it has some dimension. 
Um, and that room is just amazing for stuff like that. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that sometimes I'll use the room where I put a musician in the room to play a little bit and we'll capture sound that way. We have our good friend, Mike Miz. He's gonna come in here and play some acoustic guitar for y'all. It's pretty, pretty cool what sitting a musician in there playing will actually capture in those microphones. The higher we took the ceiling, I noticed Mike smiling a little more and playing a little different because we just created that space, great depth, great dimension. The reverb tails get really long and smooth and you get a little bit of low in buildup, which could help your sound as well. And it sounded amazing. So great tools, try them out, see if they work in your workflow. Having so many different types of reverb in one room, from the low height to the mid height to the all the way to the top, so many different types of depth, so many types of length of reverb. It's definitely one of a kind, and I hope someday you get to hear it. But if by some chance you can't make it to Nashville, Tennessee here at Studio A, our good friends at Kit Plugins just came out with a brand new emulation of this room that you can use on your sessions at home, and you can take this chamber with you wherever you go. By the time this video comes out, the plugin will be available. And if you're part of the creator plan, you get that plug-in already. I'm Ernie Gonzalez. Thanks for hanging out with us today and checking out the reverb chamber here in Studio A. So stay tuned. We have a deep dive into the plugin that's coming out real soon.